Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Emily and I am a professional pastel pencil artist. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a rose drawing with just four pencils. Usually I would use an absolute range to get this color, but for this beginner's tutorial, four pencils is going to do us just fine. You're going to learn loads. So let's have a look at the materials that I'm going to be using. You don't have to use these exact materials, but I'm going to be using the Claire Fontaine pastel mat board in white. If you don't have the white, then try and get a particularly light shade of card or board. It really does make a big difference when you don't have very many colors as the colors will come out differently depending on the color of paper you're using. I'm also gonna use some um, crystal paper which will help prevent too many smudges although as you'll see this is quite a messy drawing. For my pencils I'm using the Faber-Castell 199 which is their black, the Faber-Castell 157 which is a form of indigo and out of all of the pencils I'm using this is the one I would recommend getting the exact version of from Faber-Castell because I know that it behaves in the way that we need it to, it's particularly pigmented and it blends really nicely. We're also going to use a Caran d'Ache Scarlet if you don't have this then use any red in your range and I'm going to use the Creta color white and um, if you don't have the Creta color please go ahead and use any other white in fact a particularly soft white would be great so such as the Caran d'Ache or a Stabilo so I'm going to begin by transferring my drawing. I do this by tracing the drawing directly from a photo and this means that you and I have the exact same starting point. Be careful when you're transferring your drawing across using the biro here that you don't press too hard. If you press too hard you're going to have indents in the paper. Something else you'll notice on my trace is that I have denoted where the actual shadows are. I think for a rose especially when you're a beginner this is incredibly useful as it will prevent you getting lost within your trace. So this is a really light layer of pastel. The way I'm achieving this is using the pencil on the side and I've got a slightly flat edge to my pencil because I've worn it down a little bit. If you haven't got a flat edge to your pencil and your pencil is perfectly sharp then hold it even lower to the page and use the whole side of your pencil. So this is the very first thing to practice. How light can you get simply one layer? One layer should look something like this. And then we can go over the top with the same pressure. That's two layers. By the time you get to layer number 10, it should be pretty well filled in. Now I have kept the pencil pressure the same the entire time I'm doing that. What you will see by the end are that there are a few grainy patches. So of course you can go over those lightly uh, just in that localized area and fill it in a little bit more. But this is a really good way to start because what we're then going to do is layer over the top with our Scarlet Caran d'Ache pencil to get various different shades of purple. Now, sadly, my Caran d'Ache pencil is broken in the middle somewhere. So this is why my pastel pencil is, has been left fairly blunt. You don't have to work with yours blunt if you don't want to. This is, I think, one layer of uh, the 157. I'm going to go over the top with my Scarlet. And conversely, I'm going to press fairly hard with this one. So... Because my pencil is broken, I am going to have to hold it like a pencil quite a bit. You can do this using the side of your pencil if your pencil um, is stable, unlike mine. And you should get to the point where you've got dust on the page. Now, if I do a patch next to it with absolutely no 157 underneath at all, you can really appreciate the difference there that we have. So this is a nice, pure scarlet. And here, it's starting to become a little bit muddied uh, and then a little bit cooler as well, which is really great and it's starting to go purple. So let's try again. We give this two layers, two light layers of the 157. Again, press hard over the top with your Scarlet and look at the difference that makes. It's incredible. So one of the reasons that I've elected to use a Caran d'Ache for the pinky red over the top is because they're notorious for being very soft and highly pigmented. You don't absolutely have to use a Caran d'Ache for this at all. Use whatever pencils you have. And in fact, as much as I tend not to use them very much and don't like them that much, a Derwent pencil would probably treat you quite well here because again, they're very soft. And a lot of beginners, you'll have Derwents in your set more than likely. So this would work actually really well with your Derwent pencils. You might just not get quite so vivid colors by the end. So as a last little example, I'll do four layers, this is three, four layers of the 157. And then if I go over the top again, you need to press hard 
with your Caran d'Ache Scarlet. Dust should appear and really go backwards and forwards in multiple directions so that you're blending it together. So look at the different tones that we're able to create using just two simple pencils there. And you can see from over here that I've done different swatches. This is over five layers and this is over 10 layers just here. So incredibly dark purple by that point. And what we're gonna do from the 157 is blend into the 199. So the 199 is your black and tonally, they are very, very similar. So they become nice and easy to blend. If you're not familiar with blending and all of this is very new to you, I do have a more detailed video just on blending on the channel, but effectively start to work in light layers, get yourself some scrap paper to start with, and then practice on your rows. It's the best way really to learn how to draw and it's much more exciting than drawing lots of little swatches like this. So we're going to make a start on our drawing now. I'm going to begin with the 157 and if you're brand new to pastel pencils make sure you watch the first part of this video because it's all about blending the different colours together, it's incredibly important. So the 157 is really really dark. Um, the black that we're going to use, the 199, is darker still and we're going to use it on top of this, the areas that we want to be absolutely black. So you'll find that because we're working on the white card, this is going to show up really easily. I'm using this as a pencil to begin with and I'm starting in the darkest areas. You don't need to press uh, very hard, as I've said, with this pencil for it to show up. So don't go in um, with too much pressure because you could snap the point um, and it's also much easier to make a mistake that way. So I'll pop in a few layers. Now, first thing to be mindful of, edges. Edges are so important and if you're brand new to art or pastel pencils it's probably something you've not really thought about before and it will excel your work incredibly quickly and get you through that amateur phase much faster. So what we want to be thinking about as we go through is looking at our photo and just seeing is the difference between one edge and another really crystal clear and sharp? Is it somewhere in the middle or is it intensely soft? and then we need to mimic that. It is as simple as that in terms of the theory. But the effect it will have on your work is absolutely dramatic and it's so important with a rose because sometimes we can see a shadow creeping all the way up a single petal and sometimes we see shadows in between tightly packed petals at which point the shadows have much sharper edges. So pay attention to that as we start to work through. Starting off with one of our dark tones is also much easier when we're working on a rose because the simple structure of the rose is actually quite difficult to discern at times, um, let alone filling it in. So this just gives us a good starting point. We can see where we're at with the rose. Don't worry if you put a shadow in the wrong place, just roll with it. You're not going to notice by the time you've finished your work, but this is why I recommend giving yourself a more detailed uh, sketch to begin with. So just as I've done, I've lightly sketched over those areas to show myself that that is not red on the petal, but it's one of the deep areas of shadow. So I'm going to continue to think about my edges. Some of these start to become softer already over here. So I lift my pencil off the page, like so, and we start to get a softer edge. You can also work your pencil with very little pressure in the round. And as space allows, you can use your pencil on the side as well. So this is where we come back to those light layers that we were creating earlier. Do keep in mind, how much difference one light layer of this pencil makes to your scarlet. So every edge should be finished where we've got a soft transference uh, from darker to lighter colors with a very soft edge, incredibly soft. So this shadow is outlining the petal in front of it, you can see, which is gonna help pop it forward. And then I'm getting lighter with my pencil lifting it on and off the page and giving myself a really, really soft edge there. So we've got a huge shadow down here, biggest one on this section of the drawing that I've chosen, the section of the photo, sorry. So I'm gonna return back to the side of my pencil for this 
And again, think about building this up in layers. So especially if you are new to pastel pencils, take a moment and instead of trying to fill it all in, in one go, start to work in light layers. And do as I'm doing and continually twist your work. So here, again, I'm looking at my edges, I'm thinking about what I'm seeing and how I'm going to transfer it. We have a slightly darker area of shadow and then it becomes a little bit lighter in here, so we're going to be able to, we're going to need to get a bit more of the scarlet pencil in there. Remember how the scarlet pencil behaves on top of this pencil. So we have to make sure that there is less of the 157 in that area. And it is all incredibly soft. So my pencil is really nice and blunt, which is exactly how I need it for this. And I'm working backwards and forwards in layers. So you can see that this is darker and this is a little bit lighter. It's just so important to make sure that you're paying that much attention as you draw. Now there are some really soft little shadows around some of the petals edges. You can also go in and add these um, once there's some scarlet down. It, we probably will do a little bit of backwards and forwards like that. But I want to get all of the main shadows established with this pencil before we go in with anything else. Okay, so that is the first stage of the underpainting done. As you can see, it's quite a long process. This has taken me um, over an hour to get this in place. Uh, and what I'm now going to do is take the 199, which is the black, and I'm going to work into the very darkest areas. I do apologize if you can hear a dog barking in the background. I've actually bought a brand new microphone just because of that dog. Um, I really hope you can't hear it. <laughs> I'll do my best to edit it out. <laughs> So I'm just going into the darkest areas now with the black and on camera this might be a little bit difficult to see um, because they're very similar in tone but of course the black is pure tone and has no colour. There is a nice difference between them. So this is quite exciting because we now start to add more dimension to our rows. After this stage we're going to go and add the white into areas that we think need to be basically pink uh, and then we can add the red and start to nuance everything together basically. It's a really good drawing this one to start to learn how to push and pull pastel pencils, um, consider how tones transition, to consider how colours transition even though we aren't using very many colours um, and it's really great for your pencil control. You're not going to be able to get a particularly good underpainting here unless you're able to nuance your pastel shading from lighter touch to a harder touch um, and it's really good obviously for your eye just to get your eye into a drawing start to see where those hard and soft edges are and then honestly bring that into the rest of your work that you do it really does make a difference i think edges are something that are probably the easiest fix, if you like, um, not because they are easy, but because learning colour is uh, and tone and proportions, that's all difficult as well, but takes, I think, longer to learn. Whereas learning to nuance your edges is a much faster process. Um, we are all able to see edges fairly well. It's just about consciously processing what you're seeing. So if you start to really pay attention to that, your work honestly is going to look far less amateur really fast. I see it all the time when I'm teaching. Um, and you're going to be able to take on much more difficult projects and get a much cleaner finish on them. So 
got this whole area here. I'm going to go in with the pencil on the side. You can see what I'm doing with the black, generally speaking, is working inside the area of blue. And then I'm still allowing the blue to transition out of that. I've got the blue in my other hand here so that I can go back along the edges uh, of the black and make sure that things are transitioning nice and soft. This again is going to be much easier to see and understand in person when you're starting to draw it because you'll be able to see the difference between the blue and the black much easier. So I'm just changing to the blue here, going back over the edges of the black, using the side of the pencil, being light and I'm using it like a blending tool. So I'm starting to get some very nice soft transitions adding much more depth to the drawing, even though the drawing is very much half finished. If you're interested in other pastel pencil tutorials for flowers, I have a few more here on YouTube, and I've also got a really beautiful iris over on Gumroad, which is absolutely perfect for beginners and takes you through complementary colors so you can start to properly step into the world of color with confidence. And while I'm going round, if I'm finding areas which I want to remain blue but they're a little bit grainy where it's meant to be actually completely solid and dark, then obviously just touch them up as you go along. Um, I will also just be doing this generally as I draw. Uh, so if I notice areas that are a little bit grainy, we've only got four pencils, we know which one we're going to need to pick up, just to go back and fill it in properly. So in the darkest darks, you should be looking to have a bit of dust on the page and that means that you have fully saturated your paper there, which is what we want. Okay, so that is the black added in. And now I'm gonna take the white, and of course, you're not going to be able to see this. We're working on white paper. Again, in person, you can discern where you have put the white down, mainly because it adds a bit of a texture to the page. But on camera, this is going to be much harder to see. So I do apologize. But what we are looking for are the areas on the rose petals, which are pink. And generally speaking, that is towards the tips. Now, as we saw in the introduction, generally, we're going to need to go and add the white on top of the scarlet as well. The white just isn't really strong enough to perform like the blue does by going down only underneath. But adding it underneath is a really good little start. So I would recommend sharpening your pencil for this. You don't want to drag it into too much of the blue. Dragging it into too much of the blue is going to just create lots of patches of light blue on your page instead. So I'm just picking out the edges which are pink but don't worry too much because as I said, this isn't the strongest effect. So we will be able to nuance it uh, once the scarlet's gone down as well. But it's just a good first nudge towards the lighter patches. I'm pressing hard, partly because I know this doesn't have a really powerful effect. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. We can go in and add the white um, after the red is in much more easily. So, scarlet. Now, I haven't sharpened up this nib because as I already said, um, unfortunately my lead is broken somewhere inside the pencil. I think at some point I'm gonna have to take the risk and sharpen it up a bit because otherwise the center areas could be particularly difficult. But I'm going to start where it's easier, on the outside, and look at that shocking color. So, filling in the petal. I'm getting lighter with the pencil as I head down into those shadows so that this red can just disappear away. And while I'm here on the petal itself, I'm gonna take the white and start to nuance the edges and add in the lighter patches as I need. This is hopefully just going to help me as I work through the rest of the rows now to stop the petals becoming confused and uh, intertwined too much. This is the 157. You're going to see me doing this quite a bit as I go through. Just start to nuance the tones a bit more. So 
So here I know that I am actually going over some of that white that I've put down. Definitely going to need to put more down. As I said, it's not got a strong effect as the blue. If I had the Caran d'Ache white, it would have a stronger effect because the Caran d'Ache white is softer and more heavily pigmented. So if you've got one of those, um, or perhaps even a Stabilo Carbothello, um, then they might give you a little bit more of a tint than my white can. So again, as I go along, this is a nice light edge. I'm gonna take that white. So if you weren't doing a restricted pencil drawing here, I would be using a variety of colours to get the, uh, the right effect. By just using white, we are only desaturating this area. Uh, really, we should be using lighter pencils with different saturations uh, to get the, shall we say, proper effect. Uh, but this certainly works well, especially if you're a beginner, for pencils to get cracking with, it makes it much easier. So all I'm doing with the white at the moment is I'm creating quite a strong edge where it's lightest and then just like we did with the blue really, I'm fading it down into the scarlet and the scarlet is such a soft pastel that it does blend in quite well. I just want a bit more of this. keep thinking it needs to be a little bit darker. Just gently heading back over with the 157. So for this section in here, I've gone over in a patch with the Scarlet and then I'm taking the 157 Use it on the side because this means we can glaze over the top and then spe pay special attention to the edges and this can just help create a very slight glow in there. We don't want that to be too bright. So there's just a slight difference in there. do is now go back along this edge just to make it sharp. I'm using the black here and I'm working back into this section because I can see there are a few gaps. So I'm just going to work on the outside petals a little bit because otherwise I'm going to have to drag my hand over the main drawing to get to them. Just add a little bit more of this 157. The 
photo I'm using today is by Ian Jetic. It's over on Unsplash and one of the royalty free photos on there. I've linked it below, but a big thanks to Ian because it's creators like this that allow me to create videos and you're able to access the reference photos as well. So you can see the shape of the rose is starting to come together now. Of course, the more pencils that you use, the more depth and structure we would be able to create. There is absolutely no getting around that, that four pencils is going to give you a certain type of drawing, um, a very chromatic, um, monochromatic drawing, because really what we're doing is saturating and desaturating uh, a pencil and changing the tone. So if I were to draw this, um, shall we say, properly with more colors, then you can start to bring in colour theory and you can start to mix your different hues together and that's when we get real excitement and lots and lots of realism. However, especially when you're starting out, using a lot of pencils can be a bit daunting um, and there's a lot to think about. So you might actually find that doing a few uh, tonal drawings, even though this has colour, I would count this as a tonal drawing because, as I say, we're not... We're not using different pinks or going slightly towards orange or slightly more towards purple really to get our lights and our darks here. We are basically just mixing black and white with a little bit of the 15, well, quite a lot of the 157, which is allowing this drawing to have more dimension to it because we are creating some cooler areas and some slightly warmer areas. So it's a really good starting point, but if you want to really progress your work, um, after you've done a few of these type drawings, then you need to just bring in a few more colors really and start to do some reading around color theory. So I've got some in-depth tutorials that use more pencils and create more realistic results by the end because of that uh, over on Gumroad. And there's a really good flower one actually, if you're into your flowers, that is an iris. Um, that is a beginner's tutorial and again work on a light color paper we do have more pencils but you get some really beautiful results with that one and you learn quite a bit about how to use the lighter pastel pencils and how to work within light tones very carefully um, and we also use complementary colors as well so it's a really good step into your color theory that one um, and is again something you can do in a weekend much like this drawing Okay, I have reached that critical stage where it's safe to say I can't draw with this anymore and because it's broken inside I'm now incredibly worried that this is going to turn into one of those situations where I continually sharpen it until there's nothing left. Okay, I have about two inches of my pencil left. Let's see. While I've got a semi-sharp edge to this pencil, probably start here really. I'm going to do the centre because there is absolutely no way I'm going to be able to sharpen this. So obviously you shouldn't be doing what I'm doing here. Ideally what you should do is go and follow the pencil sharpening tutorial and have a beautiful long sharp nib that is incredibly accurate and easy to work with. Instead, I have this. I feel like this is turning into a tutorial of exactly what not to do with pastel pencils. I might have to rename the video. So what I'm going to do to fix the sloppiness that I'm creating in here is I'll sharpen up the black and use it to go back in and pick out 
the details that I want to keep and then work over the top of the details which I don't want to keep. So because I'm working with such a teeny tiny pencil, I'm going to have to go in and neaten up all of this works, obviously it looks incredibly flat at the moment and that is not really what I want it to look like when it's finished. Even though we are only using four pencils, I should still be able to get uh, a better 3D effect, as you can see from the rest of the petals. Pop a little bit in here. I'm going to treat this area as I did the others, so put a little bit of the red and then I'm going to go in and glaze it back. Wow, just getting rid of that white. This color is so beautifully intense, absolutely fab. So Faber-Castell don't really have a color like this. Um, they've got some hot pinks, which are lighter and in my opinion, have less pigment as well. And then they've got the 118, which is their kind of pillar box red. Um, it's, it's a very cadmium red, so it's quite orange. And for that reason, it's not that great to do roses with because roses are more scarlet pink. Okay, so I'm just going to stop there a minute and sharpen up my other pencils now because I'm going to need to go back in to the center of the rose so that I can fix this wonderful mess that I have just made. So I'm actually going to start with the black because I know that I need mostly black around these edges. I'm just going to start to work back in. I'm going to have to really slice away here because I've not been able to get the red quite into the areas that I want it in some places. Just starting to play around there is already making a good difference. Then I'm going to pick up the white. I've sharpened the white right up for this. I really am looking at my photo as I'm doing all of this. I'm not just guessing. Um, when we have so few pencils to work with, we need to make sure that we are making the most of them by putting the lights and the darks in the right place. There isn't a lot that can go on in between the lights and the darks. You know, the mid-tones are this slightly muddy, purpley colour that we've created, but we can't nuance it any further than that, really. So the lights and the darks have to play an important part, which is partly why I've picked this photo, because it's got a really soft focus on it, and we've got some great dark shadows and some soft highlights. So if you find that your rose starts to look um, less realistic as you're putting the highlights on it could be that you're going in a little bit hard with them and you're literally just drawing lots of lines on we've got to make sure that once again we're paying attention to our edges and where necessary we are blending them and softening them into the rest of the work also make sure that you're not flattening your work by putting highlights and shadows um, everywhere and being a bit too general with them So now I'm going to go in with the 157 because some of these are of course much too prominent and I'm being incredibly light now, really, really light and I've decided before I go in with the pencil and touch it to paper exactly what I'm going to do and which petal I am softening. 
So I'm, honestly, I'm hardly putting any pressure through at the moment. You really don't need to. There's lots of pastel down. It's all gonna be slightly blurry as we mix it together. Just make sure that the edges are softer where they need to be. I think it's this section more than any where I really feel uh, the restraint of using four pencils. I think in these areas I want to get more luminosity in. Uh, I'd be mixing up my colour temperatures a little bit more, probably bringing in some cadmium reds, uh, so they're a little bit orangey, and um, getting close toned pencils down in the same area so that they kind of they get, create a kind of bouncing effect. It's, it's really interesting. I um, absolutely love mixing colours together. So I think that's what I would be doing if I wasn't restricting myself to four pencils. And as you can imagine, it took me quite a long time to decide which four pencils to even use. Um, and the tone of the paper, the colour of the paper, that was really important. Um, you could get four pencils that worked fairly well on colour A paper and then you put them on colour B and they don't work at all. So it's really interesting and that's how I ended up coming to the white. If I wanted to use you know, a very small amount of pencils, I, I needed the, the colours and the tones to be able to pop to their fullest potential and I found that the white did the best job because I get the cleanest version of the scarlet which obviously is the most important uh, colour that we have being that it's a red rose. I needed it to be nice and clean uh, but it also allows these tones to really come out of the page nicely as well. It, it looked good with a different selection of pencils on a dark coloured card uh, but the problem is the cleanliness if you like of the the reds. It's just not possible because they're automatically slightly desaturated by the grain of the paper that pokes through here and there. So I ended up coming onto the white paper, which I haven't used in years. It's not really a favourite of mine, but I think it could be one of those things that I pick up and then get addicted to. You can draw in quite a different style on the white paper. Um, I would say it feels more like drawing than painting on, on the white, uh, but it is nonetheless, it's quite interesting. and. Uh, kind of gives you a whole new palette to work with as well. You know, when you're a pastel pencil artist, you can't mix, physically mix new colors. So it's finding different ways to make your colors and pencils do what you want to do. This shadow at the back just become too soft and disappeared. So I'm just using my finger very carefully because it's a big area to mix that together. I'm going to put a background on this because, I mean, firstly, look at it, it's, it's all messy and disgusting. Um, but also, you can see on the original photo, it's got a very dark background and actually, I think that would be really nice. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more tape. Putting a background on also means we can soften this edge, which is great because we don't really want a defined edge. If you have a look at the photo again, uh, it's out of focus as we get further away from the center of the rose. So we do want a softer edge over there, which with a white background is not the easiest thing to do. So it's gonna be much easier to just fill that with some pastel. Now, technically, of course, that does mean this is no longer a for pencil tutorial. However, you could use one of your dark pencils for that. In fact, I'm starting to think maybe I will, and then it keeps it as an official 
four pencil tutorial for you all. But if you've got some pastel blocks, then pastel blocks will um, fill in the, pla the paper, obviously a bit faster, but also more complete. It won't blend as easily for you if you haven't got quite as much pastel down. So do make sure that you've got a really good amount of pastel down if you are trying to blend things together. So at the end of any drawing, I would always go back through and just have a look for your lightest lights and your darkest darks and just check that your edges are looking um, pretty accurate. So obviously on this there are a lot of edges, so this would be quite a long task. Okay, so you can see how messy all of this edge has become now. I'm gonna take the 157, and as I said, if you've got some pastel pen, uh, sorry, pastel pencil blocks, if you've got pastel blocks, um, which is basically what I used, well, it is what I used for the, the trace uh, on the reverse, so it's just a chalk, a block of pastel chalk, then you could use one of those, especially if you're leaving a larger area. If not, follow suit and take your 157. You can see I'm using it on the side and I'm pressing really quite hard because we want to make sure that the card is properly filled in. I'm just loosely going up to the edge of the petal at the minute, but I'm not actually dealing with that edge. There's lots and lots of dust down, so try not to move that around too much. going to take my finger very very carefully you can see how mucky my hands have become during this I can now push that dust up make the most of that and then I'll carry on with the pencil I'm trying to completely saturate the card, but I don't want to end up with lots of pastel dust everywhere because it can very easily disrupt your drawing. And then I'm going to use the same pencil, of course, and just start to head up to the edge. And you can see now I'm running the pencil along the edge and lifting it at the same time. And this is just giving me a slightly softer edge there. Just ever so slightly going over the edge of the petal, just a little bit. We are going to soften this out. And then once we've got it neatly up to the edge, then not pressing as hard this time, going to go back over. You do want your pencil either blunt or on the side for this. Head back over and start to blend it in. Don't come too far into the petal because before you know it, you'll have blended half of your petal away. Be sure that the area of card that you filled in with this blue pencil is properly filled in and you can't see the tooth of the white card poking through because that would be quite distracting. So, I'm going to sign it. I'm just gonna use the white down in the right hand corner. Okay, so once you've signed it, and I've just cleaned up the edges as well, I can then remove the tape, which I think is one of the most exciting parts of a project when you've taped it up, because it suddenly makes it look as though it's been popped into a frame. So if, like me, you haven't bothered washing your hands yet, do be careful. Thank you. 
thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you want to learn how to draw other flowers, I have a really beautiful iris tutorial that is over on Gumroad. Or if you'd like some more free tutorials, I do have more on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe so that you see future videos of mine. And please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy drawing.